Hey everyone, Kaylin Thorian here, and welcome to my first little video log. I wanted to give you a real introduction to my FXR Blue. But naturally, before we talk shop, now we're ready. So for those of you who follow me, I'm sure you have seen this FXR on a lot of photos on my Instagram or other social media outlets. Uh, for those of you who don't know her, um, this is my 1993 Harley Davidson FXR Super Glide. I bought her pretty much bone stock off the original owner. She had about 10,000 miles on her and was taken absolutely perfect care of. Ever since I bought her, she has been on a lot of places with me. We did 25,000 miles together the first year that I had her, and we've gone not only all over the country, we've gone down into Mexico on multiple trips, up through Baja, and even took her overseas last summer to do a full ride through the Alps and into Italy. So she was an awesome first bike for me when I was kind of still learning how to ride. But after riding other bikes that were built for really high performance riding, I knew I wanted to upgrade her. So why don't I run through everything that we've done and uh, give you the full inside out. Let's talk about the heart of this motorcycle, which is the engine. Naturally, it came with the Evo 80 inch and may or may not have blown it up, but some of you know that story, but I don't really need to go over it. Uh, so, I obviously had to go with the SNS 111 motor. And this is a crate motor, so it pretty much comes ready to go. You just plug and play. And that means it comes with a Super E carb and the 585 cams, which we did switch out for the 600 cams. More about that later. But this 111 is really everything I was looking for. I wanted a combination of a touring motor that's reliable, but also puts out a lot of power and is fun around town, racing people, all that good stuff. One of the really nice changes that uh, Naked Dirty Rat recently made was dropping in a 600 cam. Now, this completely woke up this motor and really brought it to life. Um, off the line, it's substantially faster. Uh, throughout the entire RPM range, it's really, really smooth, very responsive, and it added that little extra torque and horsepower that I was looking for, and I think made this motor perfectly dialed. So, of course, if you're going to put a 111 in your FXR, probably good to upgrade the transmission, and went with the Baker 6, and this really blew my mind. I knew it was going to be good, but holy cow. Not only is the top end better, you've got a tighter gear ratio, and it's smoother. So, of course, after putting all this power in it, I needed my suspension to be dialed. So naturally I went with a Legend suspension, I've been using them since day one, even with the Evo, and that has always made a huge difference. I mean, <laughs> this suspension has hit massive Volkswagen sized potholes in Mexico and has come out on top and not blown up, so I stand by the quality, it's made in Sturgis, of course they know their shit. So what I did is I've got the uh, Revo Arc piggybacks in the rear, and I've got the Axio 39 TS cartridges in the front, and on top of that, beefed up the swing arm with the Track Dynamic swing arm. This trifecta right here is what you're looking for. One thing I really love about the Legend suspension is everything is adjustable by hand. No tools required. So your rebound, your preload, and your compression can all be tweaked according to the rider size, if you're adding bags, you name it, no tools involved. Of course, the swing arm, as you can see, is much beefier than the stock one. This really got rid of the weird wobbles and you know, that sort of torsional flex that you get from the stock swing arm. And you combine that with the stiffness of this front and rear suspension and all those speed wobbles, the diving, the dipping, you name it, that's just comes with the territory, has been gone. And I am so thankful for that. So if you're gonna put all this power into this bike, you're obviously gonna to wanna to be able to stop. So an upgrade that I'm really stoked on was the Performance Machine six piston calipers. Uh, they basically give you the same braking power as a dual disc without having to put a dual disc in. On top of that, I added the V-Twin Power floating rotors, and this just gives me a more reliable brake. So if you're stopping super hard, you're not gonna get some of those weird wobbles that you'll find with those kind of standard OEM rotors. Then from there, a big issue that I was dealing with last summer was a lot of wiring problems. I mean, props to this bike, the wires were 25 years old, they held up for as long as they did, but I had a lot of small wires breaking, so Nick went through and did a full rewire of the entire harness. And on top of that, clever idea from him, he actually flipped my ignition coil so you can see these guys, which are a lot of times just your problem. Super simple, but you still have to take it off, so now 
If I do find myself stranded, I can see real quick whether or not it's these three cables. Here are the things I forgot to touch on. Um, we did a chain drive conversion in the rear. And on top of that, um, also changed the ratio. So I've got a 51 rear sprocket and a 23 in the front. This just gave me more power off the line. It made it really smooth through all the RPMs. And I was just really missing that like snap. And having this ratio now has allowed me to still get that, but maintain some touring capabilities and curate the ride that's still comfortable. So I'm a little shorter than you know, most dudes, and I threw on a Biltwell pullback uh, bars, and that's been really nice because that's allowed me to get a little closer to my bars without having to lean. And then having this T-bar setup is amazing, especially in turns and canyon riding. So highly recommend doing this, especially for women. The pullbacks are money. So for the exhaust, I'm running a Super Trap 2 in a 1. Um, I don't have a ton of miles on this exhaust yet, but so far it's been great. Uh, the bracket is super durable, which if you've ever ridden an FXR, you know that you need that. And then it's fun because you can fine tune the baffles at the end. Uh, we definitely needed to open up that last cap that you see. There's a big hole in there. Uh, that really allowed this whole exhaust system to breathe, allowed the motor to breathe, and really allowed this bike to perform uh, at better capacity. So. And then some of the nice cosmetic touches that uh, I've done. Um, I've got Dirty Customs dash and side panels. Also got the Bung King crash bar here. Uh, this was not only for highway comfort, but I also do a lot of solo riding and I get myself down some weird dirt roads, some tricky places. It's just a bit of peace of mind knowing that if I do tip my bike, it's easier for me to pick it up by myself. And then on top of that, for sure, a great investment is a good seat. I love my BMC wall seat. Not only is it comfortable for long days on it, but also that extreme wall behind you. Holy cow, the, the ability to like cradle you when you're really throttling out, pushing turns, pushing speed is amazing. It keeps you upright, keeps you centered on the bike, keeps you driving. So that is worth the investment for sure. All right, long story short, guys. So that's Blue. I wanted her to be a high-performing touring bike between the 111, the 600 cam, the Legend suspension, and the Baker 6, and on top of all the other fun things, it really has created the perfect performing bike that also tours on long miles, and I am in love. If you have any questions after this vlog, I will post all the parts that are on here, or you can always email me at kaylin.thorian at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram, at Kaylin Thorian, or, you know, smoke signals, send a beer, it's fine. I guess we should hear how she sounds, right? Lady, you're going to have to pop.